Hi YouTube! In my last video I show you how to write a Linux driver for a LCD text display. And in this video we will write a module to um, use the hardware PVM IP built into the Raspberry Pi's chip. So let's look, take a look at the Raspberry Pi's pinout. Here we can see the Raspberry Pi has two pins connected to a um, PVM IP, GPIO 12 and GPIO 30, and we will use GPIO 12. So um, <clears throat> let me just, we will use, um, as a base, we will use the source code of the GPIO driver. So let me just copy the source code. Okay, and I'm changing to my new folder and rename the GPIO driver to PVM driver and of course inside the make folder we have to do the same. Okay. So now Instead of the include Linux GPIO, we will use the include Linux PVM. And I will change the description um, a simple driver to access the hardware PVM IP. And I will call it my PVM driver. And as I we would just want to um, set another PVM value here, I will delete the whole um, read function here. And of course, I have to delete the call bug down here for read as well. So, but now before I start, let me explain to you what I want to do. Here I have LED and over the PVM, which stands for Pulse with Modulation, I, can, I could use it for um, setting different brightnesses to this LED. But as it's hard for you to see on this little camera picture here if the LED is on or off, I think there is no sense in changing the brightness. So I will abuse the whole PVM uh, module to just create a blinking LED, which will blink um, with a frequency of 1 Hz and we will just change the time the LED is on or off so you could see this and I want to be able to write the letters A to J to it and A stands for the LED is all off and J for the LED is all time on and the values in between um, yeah, sets different blinking of different on times. Okay, so the first thing we will do is to add some variables here. So, we need a variable device, a pointer. I will initialize this now, and this variable pvm0 is from the type pvm device which yeah, represents our PVM device. And here I will create an unsigned 32-bit variable. I will call PVM on time and I will set it to 500 milliseconds. And this is our initial um, PVM on time. Okay, so down here let's remove the GPIO things. And here we will add our PVM configuration. So the first thing I have to do is to request the PVM I want. And here I have to type the number. I want to use GPIO 12, which is connected to PVM 0. And here I have to give a name. I will use the name my PVM here. OK. Now I'm checking if my PVM equal to zero because if so an error occurred. Could not get PVM zero. 
go to add error. Okay. And if no error has occurred, I will use a function pbm config to set the on time and the pbm frequency. Okay, for on time I'm using my variable and as a frequency I will use one second. And this value here has to be um, nanoseconds. Okay, it's one zero too much. Now it should should be okay. And then we have to enable the PBM. We can do this with the function PBM enable. Okay, and if we enable something on cleanup, we have to disable it. And we have to free our PBM. Okay. And if we would compile the module now and load it, we would get a blinking LED with the frequency of 1 Hz and 500 milliseconds on time, but we want to change it dynamically. So I will modify my driver right here. First, let's remove everything from the GPU, everything which is GPIO related. Okay, and here, set PBM on time. Okay, so at first I will do a check if um, the value is in a valid range. I will print out an invalid value. And I will use A and J because it's easier to um, copy over us because I want to use echo to write to my function and this is why I will just use this letter. Okay, um, the next thing we will do is else we will call pbm config. So, and now our on time is. So now if you pass an A, the on time will be zero here. And if you pass J, our on time should be one second, so always on. So this is what this thing should do. Okay, and that should be it. Now let's I will try to compile it. Okay, looks good. So let's load the module. Okay, and now we can see our LED blinking with 500 milliseconds on, 500 milliseconds off. And in our device folder, we should see my PVM driver. Okay. So I will change read and write. I will give every user read and write um, access to the device file. And now let's echo an A into it. Now it's all off. If I echo a J into it, it should be yeah, nearly nearly always off. And if I choose a value in between, for example E, oh E not free, <laughs> sorry. Now it's 500 to 500. Okay, great, it works. And if I remove uh, my module out of the kernel, driver, yeah, it is off again. But I forgot to mention something because if you want to use it, um, you need you need to have a module loaded which take care of uh, mapping. Yeah, which writes into the hardware registers of your PVM IP. So if I do a LS mod and read for PVM, yeah, we should see a PVM BCM 2835, and this is a driver which handles um, all the hardware access. 
for setting the on and off times because in our module we just use an interface and we don't directly access the hardware registers and to load um, this driver all you have to do is go to the slash boot config txt file and down here you should you have to add the line dt overlay equals pvm2 chain and here you can set the pin and the function number of um, the function number of the pin. Um, I didn't look it up in the data sheet. I found this line on the internet. But if you have ever programmed on a microcontroller or STM microcontroller, for example, you know GPIOs can have different function numbers for different functions. And to use the PVM function or to map this GPIO, the GPIO 12, to the PVM IP, all you have to do is set it to the function number four and then it should work. And after adding this line into the boot config file, um, the driver for PVM will be loaded automatically and we can use it. If it isn't loaded, we will get um, some nasty memory errors because um, the whole thing don't, doesn't know um, to what register it should write the value we want to pass. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for watching and I hope I will see you in the next video.